Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday. It's uh, the next to last Friday of the regular season in uh, Major League Baseball. And joining us now is a man who I've had the pleasure of knowing for more years than probably uh, either of us uh, would like to remember. Uh, but I got to tell you, when I was growing up as a Yankees fan, uh, watching the uh, the amazing uh, Yankees uh, do their amazing stuff and and just shake up the baseball world with Billy and George and the and, and the whole thing. Um, he was working for Billy and George while well, working for George. Uh, anyway, joining us is uh, my friend Marty Appel, who uh, is the author of Now Pitching for the Yankees, spinning the news for Mickey, Billy, and George, uh, with a forward by Yogi Berra, by the way. And uh, hey, Marty, how are you? I'm great. Good to be on with you. And we do go back a long time, and that's a good thing. Yeah, I know. I know. It's just, uh, you know, sometimes I look in the mirror and I actually see, uh, you know, uh, a black hair uh, uh, in all the gray. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. So anyway, so uh, very exciting. This I know this book came out a while ago, and, and you, you've, uh, you've updated it, correct? Yeah. Um, it was nicely received by Yankee fans when it came out a decade ago. But the publisher went out of business six weeks after the book came out. So that kind of ended all the marketing and distribution. Yeah. The people that did get it liked it. And the, uh, because it's what it is is like uh, behind the scenes uh, of a Yankee fan, which I was growing up, who got to work for the team. I got hired to answer Mickey Mantle's fan mail. And I went on to become the PR director and the whole Bronx Zoo years and everything. But uh, I wasn't connected. I didn't have any relatives that worked there. I just wrote a letter, got hired to answer the fan mail, and everything since then starts with that letter. The, the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I, mean, I recall the letter that I wrote uh, that got me, that eventually got me uh, an internship at, the, at WMCA back in 1979. I was sitting in the newsroom of my college radio station at Brooklyn College and wrote the letter, actually made a phone call, and he said, write a letter. And that, you know, and that letter started it all, too. It's, it's, it's funny how, how life works. But um, all right, so, so, so the, the, the great stories in there, and any Yankee fan would love it, and any, any uh, a baseball fan who remembers the Bronx Zoo and the crazy days and the days when the Yankees actually, you know, started winning ball games and getting to the World Series uh, uh, will love this. But let, let's – we'll talk more about that. But let's, let's fast forward here. First of all, um, Andy Pettit, um, you know, who's uh, – I would I I would normally say uh, has a great possibility of being a future Hall of Famer. Uh, however, he did admit to some you know I don't want to phrase it wrong a growth hormone steroids whatever it was called did admit to some use at one point although he did admit it. Uh, I don't know if that will uh, put a damper on his uh, Hall of Fame prospects or not. But uh, for the second time, Andy Pettit announced today that he's retiring at the end of the year. Yes, I watched the press conference which was carried live and. Uh Interesting, he's going out the same year as Mariano Rivera, who saved 75 of his victories. I don't know if we'll ever see anything like that. Wow, again. yeah, that is amazing. So, uh, um, and with Posada retiring a couple of years ago, and who knows about Derek Jeter's future, so it's uh, the end of an era, really. It is the end of an era, and, and let's talk about that here, and let, let's talk a little bit about, I uh, just want to run some things by you in, in your capacity sure. as someone who has, has seen so much and seen baseball change. Um, you know, it, 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 the game is completely different. When I was growing up, uh, you know, uh, uh, and even Goose Gossage, a uh, reliever came in, that you, had, you had a closer, a pitcher would pitch a complete game, not all the time, uh, but a, a lot of the times. Now you never see a complete game, with few exceptions. And you don't even, you, you know, if the guy goes six innings, you got your, 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 your two setup man and your closer, and it's considered a great performance. If you go six, you go seven, you're like, you know, unbelievable. Um, but what gets me also is I think kids are growing up today and it, things aren't put in context, and I blame. In a sense, I mean, you can't harp on it and you don't want to turn people off, but I, I don't think TV puts things in proper proper perspective. Yes, Mariano Rivera, probably the greatest reliever we've ever seen, more postseason and all that, but, you know, he was fortunate enough to get into postseason. He helped his team get into postseason, but there's also a lot more postseason games now than there were when other relievers were pitching. There's a lot more levels of games, but also – one inning. I mean, if he, if Mariano Rivera, you could count probably on both hands how many multi-inning saves he had. When Goose Gossage, sometime would, who's in the Hall of Fame as a reliever, would pitch three innings sometimes for to get his save. So it's a completely different era, and I think it should be put forth in that context. Well, there's a bigger thing there too, because you're right about what you say. But the thing that's ignored is uh, 
there's no way you can compare today's starting pitchers to starting pitchers of complete game era. And not only is that a measurement of complete games, but it's a measurement of facing a batter with the game on the line. And there's no starting pitchers who ever, ever do that. So even the most prominent starting pitcher of modern times, which I guess was Clemens, and we'll put the steroid discussion on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. But even Clemens very seldom pitched a complete game. And if he did, he would have like a 7-1 lead, so they'd let him pitch the ninth. If the game was on the line, you bring in the closer. So when we were growing up, Don Drysdale had to face Willie Mays in the ninth inning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, very different in that sense and impossible to compare starting pitchers. Yeah, abs- absolutely. All right, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, the the, uh, the wild card, for instance. Uh, this this new, uh, you know, relatively uh, speaking, uh, two, two wild card uh, situation. Uh, certainly, I'm looking at the wild card standings now. Certainly, it is, uh, you know, uh, given hope to those teams that ordinarily would have no hope. Uh, although at this point, uh, f- hope is fading for a lot of teams, including the Yankees. But Cleveland, Baltimore, Kansas City, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the chances are they, you know, they wouldn't even be uh, uh, thought of because, uh, you know, you only used to have one one wild card. Now you got now you got two. Um, and, and but then it ends in a in a one game playoff, which I think is is kind of I just don't like the whole format. Do you like the format? I mean, do you like I'm okay this? Okay, with it. I mean, it's not different than the NFL in that sense. You get one game. True, but out. baseball never. You know, baseball. See, to yeah. me, baseball was the last pure. Not that it was pure with one wild card. Not that it was pure with a designated hitter. But baseball has always been the slowest and and the purest of the sports. The slowest to change. Now instant replay is going to come into focus more next year, but they've they've held back on that more so than the other leagues. And I just think it's uh, becoming too much like the other leagues maybe. No, I'm okay with it. And I think that Kansas City fans can be excited at this point of the season is a fabulous thing. Uh, and even New York where we're spoiled and, you know, Rivera's been in the postseason all but one year of his whole career. Right. Uh, it's pretty good that it's that the Yankees are still in it with a, team that's like a triple a ball club all season to to be over 500 all year and to be still contending with nine games to go this is fun i love it and 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 so and you you kind of gave it away but uh you have no problem with the uh what they're going to do next year with the replay and you know basically making it a little like football with the coaches challenge uh, here a manager's challenge it's okay i mean the important thing is to get the call right and we've seen too many blown calls for too long. I mean, this has taken too long to bring this in. It's like uh, I think of Ray Chapman getting hit in the head by a pitch in 1920 and, uh, you know, dying, the only on-field death there ever was. Right. And then 35 years later, they the helmets. Use helmets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I understand that. And that that's, yeah. that's probably a good analogy. But, again, I'm, I'm, I can't help being this purist, and I can't, I can't help but thinking, you know, yeah, if we have the technology to get it right, I guess. But – um, first of all, I don't think anybody thinks baseball games are too too uh, too short right now. That's number one. But that aside, I, I just think you know we're humans. It's a game played by humans. If if, if there's an error to be made by an umpire, and it all evens out in the end, it's always been that way. So I just hate to see the technology you know not take over, but stay, rear its ugly head. In my opinion, if you will. Okay, we'll agree to yeah to uh, disagree mild, on that. Mildly disagree. Now, let me ask you about what took place yesterday. By the way, we're talking to Marty Appel, and uh, he's the uh, author of a, of a book uh, that has been updated, but it's also I'll call it a great new book. Now, pitching for the Yankees, spinning the news for Mickey, Billy, and George uh, about his role as a PR director for the Yankees in the mid seventies. Um, I, I told the story earlier. That I was at my son's uh, the travel team game in the summer, 13 years old, in New Jersey. And the visiting team, after they beat us, coming from behind, after they shook hands uh, and our team went to their, their dugout, they decided to go sliding all over the field. It was an artificial turf field and sliding and, and, and on home plate and playing on the mound. And I said, I, I, to, I, I, was in, I was shocked. I never saw anything. So Bush League. Um, and then... I didn't see it, but of course I've seen and heard of it. Basically, the Dodgers, I know there's no love lost between those two teams, but do you think it was right for them to jump in that pool in, in the outfield and, and celebrate? 
<laughs> I laughed when I saw it, Steve. Um, uh, you know I guess what? I'm too it's serious. Was, it's a game, right? But I, I it just it was a great Dodger named Roy Campanella who said you got to have a lot of little boy in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll just let it go at that. Um, I'm happy for Don Maddie. I am I too. Think, I, I don't know if he jumped into the pool. <laughs> but, uh, I wouldn't blame him. <laughs> yeah, he went through a very, very uh, tough season. That's uh, that's for sure. So who do you who do you like? Uh, Heading in here, uh, I mean, you know, uh, the, the, we got Pittsburgh, which is a, a, a great story, and, uh, you know, and uh, a lot of great stories. But when push comes to shove, I, I kind of all along for the past month or so, even though they've struggled, I, I kind of like Pittsburgh's chances in the, uh, in the NL. And uh, I don't know, uh, a couple of possibilities in the American League. I think Boston is very solid. Well, Boston has certainly looked great against the Yankees. That's so. true. <laughs> It's hard to watch those games and not feel they're kind of a super team. Um, Dodgers, to me, are a great story because of how close it was to just falling apart. Floating and Mattingly and the coaches all getting fired. Yep. And then they came back and did this. So uh, Don Mattingly, who's never been in a World Series at all, I mean, I'm really Well, I'm rooting for him, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, I don't know. I mean, Boston just has looked so good the times I've seen them. They miss maybe the team of uh, 2013. Yeah. And as far as the Yankees go, if they uh, – I mean, you know, there's there's no reason to believe that uh, they, they'll turn around. They're losing five of their last six, I believe it is, uh, in situations where they really needed those games. It would, it would really be miraculous if they uh, passed Kansas City, Baltimore, and Cleveland, and then, then either Tampa Bay or Texas in the next ten days. Anything's possible. But if they don't make it – um, or or if they do, Robinson Cano is he going to get like a ten year deal from the Yankees, or does he go to the Dodgers, who might be more willing to pay that kind of money for that kind of time? I think the Yankees would let him go if that's what the Dodgers are offering. Yeah, uh, just from what I've heard and my own gut instinct on it, it'd be a shame. He's a joy to watch, an enormous talent, and probably the best second baseman in Yankee history, uh, which is quite a thing. Two Hall of Famers in Lazari and Joe Gordon. But I'm sure they couldn't play the game like Robinson Cano plays it. Yeah, very interesting. Hey, Marty, really a pleasure, my friend, to talk uh, to you. And this book uh, available uh, all over? Well, it's an e-book. It's an e-book. Okay, it's yeah. reissued. Okay. Uh, and if I could, one more, Steve, uh, one more point on it. Yeah. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to make any changes, and I said, no, I'm, you know, I stand by everything I said 10 years ago. And then I called them back, and I said, if you're serious and if we can make changes – I always referred to George Steinbrenner as George in the original book. You changed to Mr. Steinbrenner. I said, I never called him George. I just did it because it felt reader-friendly. Right. I'd feel more comfortable making it Mr. Steinbrenner. So that was 125 changes. Wow. That's very that, happy we did it. That's <laughs> a great story. That's a very interesting story. And, <laughs> a lot, and, and, and very respectful on your part and very admirable on your part, actually, too. Um, all right, Marty. Thank you very much. Uh, again, now pitching. Uh, for the uh, for the Yankees, and it's by Marty Appel, forward by Yogi. How is Yogi? I mean, uh, he was at Old Timers Day, and you know, did, didn't get out off the card. Him and Whitey. I had the feeling that Whitey could have, uh, but didn't because Yogi couldn't have. Is 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 Yogi okay? Yeah, he's fine. There's no ailments. He's right. just uh, he's 88 years sure, old. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. All right, God bless him. All right, Marty, we'll speak again. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye bye, Marty bye. Appel, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, really. Uh, Really a legend. He now has his own uh, public relations firm, uh, as a matter of fact, and uh, does some great work. So I love talking baseball. I love talking sports. We could do that, you know, half the time if I uh, if I uh, went in that direction or was so inclined. But I will not, and I'm not. <laughs> I used to do sports uh, exclusively for the first dozen years of my career or so, including uh, hosting uh, the New York Yankee pre- and post-game show on WABC Radio, the Yankee flagship, back in 1990 which was one of the worst seasons the Yankees. Uh, they haven't had a worse season since then. And prior to that, it was a number of years before they had such a poor season. I think they won, I don't want to say 68 games, 69 games, something along those lines. Terrible season, but an eventful season. You had uh, Bucky Dent fired 16 games into the season as manager, replaced by Stump Merrill. George Steinbrenner was suspended for life from baseball. Uh, by the commissioner of, uh, of, of baseball. Um, you had all kinds of things going on constantly. Just uh, it became the Bronx Zoo again in a different different way. All right, folks, we'll come back. Anybody want to weigh in on uh, baseball and uh, who your favorite might be to um, 
make it to, to the uh, playoffs or, or to the uh, to the uh, league championship series or the World Series. I'll be glad to entertain that. 855-777-9660, 855-777-9660. Steve Ballsberg on the Steve Ballsberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Ballsberg Show.